In 1964, one man changed the face of boxing in Sheffield forever. That man was Brendan Ingle. Since then, Sheffield has produced some of the best names in the boxing business. Brendan arrived in Sheffield in the late 1950s looking for work. He followed his brother over to the Steel City where he had relations and soon made a name for himself. Brendan was approached by the local vicar in Winkerbank who explained to him the problem of youth violence in the area. The building opposite the church in Winkerbank was run down and out of use. Brendan was given licence to start work on the gym you now see today. Gradually I started making alterations to it and one of them was especially when we got into the 80s I was working for a, a training job scheme for young people that were hyper, hyperactive underachievers all sorts of problems smashing kids having boxed in his youth Brendan used his knowledge of the sport to construct every living detail of the gym there was always plenty of ideas and uh, what I found that fascinating was the steelworks in Sheffield in the engineering so I designed all these spring-loaded swivels that hold the bikes so the bikes can move anyway and if you look when I say to people I'm going to make it so we can train about 50 or 60 at once he says you're mad. Brandon's ideas were unique to say the least and not all confined to the boxing ring. Well, the first thing I started with was the lines. But I got the lines, I had this idea about these lines, the circles and up and down and the colours. And also singing when you're training. People thought it was mad. Red and yellow and pink and green, orange and... So your hands, your feet, your eyes, your voice are all in coordination. Red oh. and yellow and pink Can't hear and you. green. Can't hear you. Red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. What do you think that does for you? Self-confidence. Self yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Look, you're looking down there. What do you think that does for you? Self-confidence. Gives you confidence. And then, boxing songs. Stand up and fight until you hear the bell. Trade, poke, football. People thought it was around the bend. But if you get people shadow boxing singing, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your voice are all in coordination. So people thought he's lost the plot. But he says in time, he says all these champions are going to come out of here. So the time rolls on, all the champions come out. Names such as Harold Bomber Graham, Kel Brook, and also Ryan Rhodes have all been products of the Ingle camp but Brendan feels that there is one individual who really stood out. Without a doubt, without a doubt, it's got to be Johnny Nelson. People are going to ask me why, and they say, well, Johnny Nelson come in here. He was a, start, a tall, skinny, black kid. He was afraid of his own shadow. He had no confidence. Eddie Graham used to torment him in the ring. His only body sparred and fiddling him around and wanting another. Johnny Nelson used to go out at this gym crying. It's hard to believe. I says, listen, I says, you're 15 now. I said, again, you're 18, he will not be able to do anything with you. You've got to come every day. It's not my problem. I says, I live across the road. He was in here every day, going up and down these lines, going around the circles, then gradually, after probably a year or two, he get in here, he was holding his own. The amateurs, I think he lost his first three or four. 
probably the same with the pros. People used to, again, you say, what are you wasting your time with him for? Don't they do nothing? So he says, I beg to differ. The rest is history. Another rising talent from the gym is Muhiyyu Fazeldin. The 20-year-old Sheffield boxer is just starting his professional career and is unbeaten in his first three fights. The bantamweight boxer describes how much boxing means to him. Well, I've been boxing since a young age, but well, I've been off and on. And then uh, I started when I was uh, 40, so it's a good six years now. I've been in every day. For many aspiring athletes, boxing is more than a sport. It is a way of life. Mahib explains why he loves the sport so much and what else can be learned from it. Well, to be honest, it's, sport is, it's very, it keeps you a disciplined person and keeps you on your toes and keeps you very fit, you know what I'm saying? And it's just a sport of competition. I always like competition. And it's the only sport that is real. Like some sports are kind of fake. Boxing is kind of real. You get what you see. You know what I'm saying? Over the years, Sheffield has continued to churn out boxing greats, including names like Harold Bomber Graham and Johnny Nelson. But there is one name that all young boxers from the city truly remember. Well, yeah, there's a lot of boxers. There's Muhammad Ali, there's Mike Tyson, there's Prince Nazim Hamid. There's Floyd Money Mayweather, there is loads of boxers, but I really look, used to look up to, because I'm from Sheffield, I looked up to Prince Nazim Hamid, and he's from the same gym, and uh, I always looked up, looked up to, to him like, as a boxer, I like his style. Many boxers are known for having their own trademarks. Fast hands, quick feet, the ability to switch stances. Much like his idol Nazim Hamid, Mohib is a southpaw, and he believes that since training at Ingalls Gym, he has developed his own brand of boxing. I can, I can switch, I can hit with both hands uh, and every day I'm getting fitter and fitter being at this gym and I think, I think I'm a, I think, I think I'm a good boxer, well I know I'm a good boxer actually, I've got my own style, in this gym everyone's got their own style, it's just, it's an Ingle style isn't it, it's just confident, we're not cocky but we're just too confident. For Mahib, boxing is his life, he lives and breathes it, there is no place he would rather be than here at Ingle Gym training. Yeah, the, the atmosphere is buzzing, we're buzzing, like coming to this gym, like no matter what's in your head, but as soon as you walk out them doors, you're just like, it's a whole different atmosphere, like, I, I, I love being here, is that my second home? I spend, literally, I spend more time in the gym than I spend with my family. And like most young boxers from the gym, there is one man who has supported Mohib every step of the way, Brendan Ingle. Oh yeah, he's like a father figure to me, like, whenever I, whenever I was at school and I had problems, I'd come and ask him and he'd come and help me out with him, and like, just, like you, I'm telling you, like being next to your idol and a legend, like seeing a legend every day, it's just like a dream come true. I can't ask for more. He's a legend to be around. For Brendan, becoming a boxer starts outside the gym in the ring, something all kids who train here quickly learn. Look at the results here. And the kids, as I say, that wouldn't go to school, they come down here and they say, I want to fight. How do they say it? I want to fight. And it says, what's your attitude like? He say, bad. I says, what about school? Do you want you from school? He say, yeah. I says, well, you got to change your attitude. I said, you got to go to school. If you want you from school, you're out. You've got to come in here and do as you're told. I say, in time, time and patience, I says, you will become champion. Brendan's no-nonsense approach to training doesn't just help individuals become better boxers, but also allows them to become better people. Something Brendan has taken pride in since he opened the gym. I says, the first thing in here is manners. If you come up to get your gloves tied, you come up and say, Brendan, would you tie me gloves, please? I tied them. I says, and then what? I says, I hold your gloves until you say thank you. That's the way, right from the start, this place is work. Boxers from all over the UK come here to Sheffield to train with Brendan and follow his philosophy. No one knows this more than Oxford-born Leo Delonge. Leo is currently undefeated with five wins, one draw and zero losses. Following in his father's footsteps, Leo became a professional boxer when he left school. Uh, my dad was a boxer, got to uh, the final in the Harvard Championships, yeah. University Championship in America, and he taught me my brother had a fight when we were kids. And then uh, when I left school, I took it up properly. Like many other kids, Leo tried his hand at a variety of other sports when he was younger, but he felt that boxing was his true calling card. Yeah, I really liked it. I still played other sports. I was good at football, tennis, 
uh, basketball. I used to race motocross, but boxing, I think I can uh, be better than good, be uh, make money, good money out of it. Having seen many legends of the boxing world pass through the hallowed doors of Ingle Gym, Leo believed it was his turn to join up with the best in the business. I'd seen uh, some fighters like former world champions like Prince Ian Habib, uh, Bomber Graham, uh, Ryan Rhodes, and they all come from here. And all, uh, I like the way they box the style. I also had a good friend, Gareth Couch, who uh, we went to my old amateur gym. He was 40 and a pro, and uh, he told me that this is the best gym around. So I tried a few other gyms, and uh, I tried this one, and this one just way better than all the rest. And uh, I've come here and loved it and never looked back. Being a boxer at Ingle Gym isn't just about training to become a world-class athlete. There is much more to it than that. There is a sense of community and friendship around the place, something that Brennan has developed over his time here. Brennan's brilliant because he's, uh, he's a character like myself. Uh, he's fun to be around. Uh, always have a, he's, always got, uh, he's always got very good advice, the best advice you can, you can want. And uh, yeah, he makes every day interesting, more fun. You learn, he teaches you things about other things apart from boxing, about just life and things like that, and how to be a better person. And like that. I say to him, life's all about helping people, helping one another. I teach in here when I start teaching up to teach life and social skills, communication skills, interview take. What have we got to learn that for? I says, well, you go for a job. I says, the magic words is please and thank you and not abracadabra. Brendan knows that by coupling these values with hard work and dedication, a boxer has the potential to become the complete package. Boxing's all about time and distance coordination, mobility, flexibility, agility, accuracy, rhythm, pace, and the will to win. If you can hit hard, then you bring your own referee with you. One man who knows this better than most is Sheffield's own Kel Brook. Kel is currently undefeated in his 30 fights, with 20 of his wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked as the number four welterweight in the world, behind Floyd Mayweather Jr., Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. Kel's next fight is in late October, where he takes on the Ukrainian Senchenko, who beat Ricky Hatton earlier this year. He seems happy to be fighting in his hometown again, but explains that he will not be taking his next opponent lightly. You know, it's, I'm just happy to be on in Sheffield again. Um, you know, it's a, definitely it's a step up. He's only lost one fight, and that will we're on a cut. You know, he's you know he's, he's ranked high in the governing body. You know, he were, he were a world champion. You know, anyone who's been a world champion, you know, and uh, you know lost on a cut, um, you've got to take very seriously. So, you know, he's you know he's going to come over here like he did against Atten. And he's got he's got something to prove, you know. I'm unbeaten. He's you know he wants to take my my scalp and you know and and be in the position I'm in, you know, mandatory for the IBF and and will rank. So you know he's definitely going to be coming over here, wanting wanting to you know make a statement. You know he come over here and people writing him off against Atten. So you know he's he's a good traveller. You know he travels well. You know he performed. He stopped Ricky Atten. And you know it's a big name. It, it boosts his confidence. So he's coming into this fight, you know, knowing that he can come, you know, come over to to this neck of woods, and he can perform. So you know he's he's coming, you know, on a real high. He's got a good scalp in Hinaten, and you know he's definitely going to. have got to take him very seriously. The 27-year-old will be approaching this fight in much the same way as his previous ones, and believe the correct preparation will be enough to see him through. Um, you know, I'm just going to train hard. Listen to me training. You know, our trainers. And uh, you know, just that's that's all we can do. Work hard. I've been boxing 18 years now. I think that you know, I definitely know how to box. And when I get when I get in that ring, you know, I'm just gonna do what I do, and that and that's win. With four of his last five fights taking place right here in Sheffield, Kel's success has really reignited the boxing fire in the city. He seems to have developed a special relationship with his hometown fans. Yeah, every time I box in Sheffield, obviously, you know, they're passionate. They're, you know, I can I can feel their energy, you know, and it you know it comes through me. You know, it makes makes me feel great in there. You know, feeling you know coming out to all them to all of the lights and uh, you know listening to all the fans screaming and shouting. So you know it's it's going to be a great night for Sheffield Steel City. So I'm looking forward to the to the night. 
Having failed to secure a title fight with Devon Alexander earlier this year due to injury, Kelly's still itching at a chance to fight in America again. Yeah, definitely, you know, I boxed that in boxed in, in America be once before. You know, it's it's a great place. It's in a you know the Mecca of boxing. There's some massive, massive, you know, fights out there. You know, you've you've got your big arenas. You know, MGM and like the Square Gardens. What I've dreamt about as a, as a young kid. You know, boxing on them big bills. So yeah, it's definitely my dream to get out there and you know top a bill against the top 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 fighter in in America. However, the one there on every Kel Brooks fan's lips is, of course, Amir Khan. You know, it's very, we're talking about that, it's very, very close. You know, I think that the, f the fans are going to command it. And it's, I think in 2014, we will see myself and Khan in the ring together. Name after name have passed through the doors of Ingle Gym, and that will continue to be the case for years to come. But for Brendan, it's not just about the big names, it's about the younger ones and getting them to enjoy the sport and develop responsibilities they can use in the future. So here, they want to come in here all the time, that's why the place, if you make it enjoyable, you make it entertaining, they will want to come. And like as I said before, they've got to go to school, there's no wagging it, there's no giving cheek to the teachers. For almost 50 years, Brendan has seen hundreds of boxers come and go from his gym with some making it and some not. His passion and enthusiasm for the sport is unrivaled. With everything he has accomplished over his career and contributed to boxing over the years, he is seen as one of the true legends of the sport. Let me just say to you, I'm going on 72, we're going on, going on 73. I'm going on 73, there isn't enough hours in the day. There wasn't enough time to do what you want to do. And I don't, again, as I probably said to you before, I don't know where the time's gone. But it's I've had a fantastic time. The Sheffield Rover came over, Winkerman killed, down through Shy Green, so shady. He whistled and sang till Woolly Wood rang, and he won the heart of a lady. Adi do, adi do, da day. Adi do, adi day, dee. He whistled and sang till Wally Wood rang.